Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. We've got some updated rules, little ones and big ones. We're going to chat all about it. Let's do it. Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. Thank you very much for joining us today. It's brought to you by SeatGeek. Code Talkin can help you out over there. My name is Jimmy. Sitting next to Jake. Trevor is in California and BBD joining us behind the dish, producing his butt away. Ooh, Trev drinking from a green mug, wearing a oh. green hoodie. That's a nice mug. I like that. I have a Migos Lodge mug that's very similar to that, where our friend Nick got married jake's wearing his scientist glasses today jake how you doing blue light glasses jim um protect your eyes people trev has his all-star unit going on jimmy and some blues it makes those eyes pop baby that's how we got katie now there's two fucking kids oh claire crawled today Woo! <laughs> on the move she's crawling to those new rules we're talking about um I'm doing good. We've got a big couple days coming up. Uh, some blood and tears are about to be shed in the warehouse, uh, which just changes the whole office dynamic. <laughs> some alphas <laughs> get get made uh, in the warehouse floor. Trev, you know all about that, my man. And you're a rules you're a rules guy. How many hidden ball tricks did you pull off? I just picked your runner off at second base. I don't know if you saw that. I saw that. You took move. the bat yeah. out of my hand, bro. God, I'm BBD. Speaking of alphas in the warehouse, BBD's on this show, my guy. Uh, look, yeah, I do have my all-star kit on. I'm excited to talk about some of these rules because once we get into it, I think people are going to uh, like realize baseball's been in gray areas for like 100 years. So I think we're trying to like crack down on that a little bit, although I think we're still going to get some gray. Mm. Speaking of gray, James. Oh, oh. Trev. Oh. I, do, oh. I didn't do my beard this morning. I got to do my hair. Um, damn. Fuck. <laughs> it's tough. My hair's so gray. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to We're all it. gray, dude. I'm gray, too. Don't be ashamed of it. My <laughs> friend used to say, life's rough, bro. It's wisdom. If my hair wasn't gray in the pattern it's gray, I wouldn't care. Like, the top needs to just be gray. Or the oh, bottom go tea gray. That that I don't like that much, and it's easy to fix. I the, like it. The hair is male pattern graying, so it's just like it looks like I have a toupee on top. Maybe shave mm. the gray chin off and put that on top. This is stark white. Like there's dye left in this. If I go like during uh, paternity, I went like four weeks, and it's like my chin's white. It's nuts. You know, like when you see pictures of like Obama before yeah. office, Obama after office is like James before Trump media took off. Now James, the hair I, was always grand. Some grand. The the beer it took a big it took a leap it took a big leap. Uh, I just I just tweeted out because it was comedy. It was comedy. He said said the ancient Greeks. Um, you know, in my YouTube recommended videos. The Nationals are World Series champs. Talking baseball popped up. Uh, no Trevor Plouffe. Better times, people were saying. Uh, and yeah, Jimmy's got a little pre-president there. I've got a little uh, pre-president there. So Yeah, know, but people, I was way forget. bigger then. That's the better thing. Well, your face yeah. also would, you know, sometimes your own teeth yeah. would attack your face. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, not, that's just up 40 pounds from where I'm at now, or right. 35, which is crazy. Bummer. Look at that, that old peanut setup. butter balls used to make. Hmm. Pistachios. I love peanut butter. Still I does. Butter. I mm. love peanut butter. All right. So off season, they change the rules. Mm. Here's some info on how the rules get changed, just to get you guys ready for it. There's an MLB. There's MLB committee members. Um, there's 11 members, six owners, four players, and one umpire. The owners on the committee are John Stanton from Seattle, Bill DeWitt. Junior, Junior, from St. Louis, Greg Johnson from San Francisco, Dick Monfort from Colorado, I think he shows up, Tom Werner from Boston, and Mark Shapiro from Toronto. Mm. On the player committee, some friends of the program, Jack Flaherty, yeah. Tyler Glasnow, Whit Merrifield, 
who's a free agent currently, and Austin Slater. Stole your nickname. Oh. A lot of guys with new teams. Austin Slater's a great name. Uh, alter- alternate committee members, Ian Happ and Walker Bueller. We basically Is Slater run. the only one we don't have a connection to? <laughs> I'll connect right well. now. I'll connect right now. What's your, what's your IG, Aust? Probably like Slater Dog. AC Slater Dog? Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's Slater Dog. <laughs> I think Slater. Austin underscore Slater 53. He's like, missing out. He's such a, like, a kid bully. AC sure Slater Dog. Everybody. Slater Dog. Just he followed. should say that after it's a homer. Just followed. Let's see. We, we both follow Gabe Kapler. Okay. Tyler Austin. Obviously. MLBPA and Xavier Scruggs. There you go. What's up, Beck? Shout out so, to Beck's new show out on YouTube. So that yeah. is how the committee is made. Um, oh, the umpire is Bill Miller. Love it. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Old school. Old, Old school. Straightforward. Willie Miller. We're talking rules. I'm just going to rep. So the big one is pace of play, because obviously that was a huge one last year. Baseball changed uh, pretty sharply with this one last year. And they changed it a little bit. The pitch clock was um, 15 seconds with no one on last year and 20 seconds with the runner on. Is that correct? Yes. They are changing it to 18 seconds with a runner on. Which is very interesting because the players wanted the same for both. That was the big thing all year. Just make it the same, the same tempo. I think the players thought they would be getting more time on the 15. And the owners basically said, well, we'll make it closer to the same. We're going to shave some off the 20. <laughs> some players are going to be like, oh, okay. Um, the reason being is that they said that pitchers got so comfortable by the end of the year, they were like using the extra 20 seconds and games got longer again. Yeah. Seven minutes longer. Yeah, but month by month, it, the average time of the game did increase. April 237, May 238, June 239, 241 in July and August, and 244 in September. So they're trying to recoup those minutes. And, I mean, I don't think this is going to matter at all because because people were ready for the pace of play uh, by the end of the season. And the one thing I thought was really interesting, and we, we talked about this before last year, was what are the pitchers going to do to like game the clock? And some did. The vast majority did not, and I think that I think that's like a mistake on their part, or maybe they're just there's too much going on. That's what a pitcher will tell you: is there's too much going on, and they're thinking about things, and they already feel rushed, so they can't really game the clock. But you really can. Like holding is such an advantage for the for the pitcher, but this kind of eliminates that a little bit more, I guess. Yeah, Jake, got anything on this? Sports are built on rules. Jake Storielli. Um, yeah, I, the pitch clock was a little aggressive for me at first. I covered it here on, on Talking Baseball. Uh, the biggest thing that happened, like if I baseball wants those minutes explained from 237 to 244, it was the batters learning they could call time. Like you, you every, literally every every about yeah. You, you saw it, and and it makes sense. You know, you go down o two one two. Catch your breath, like, um, and I actually like that. Uh, and maybe this is a little bit of a reflection on my Yankees that were the worst hitting Yankees team in a hundred years. That the games were flying by. Like I felt uncomfortable. Like I I like getting tweets off during the game, and I there was a couple times, and again. The majority of this is the failing Yankees offense that I was like, what? Like, how are we already in the fifth inning? I, I was losing a little of the allure. When the hitters figured out they could call time, that slowed it down the half step that was needed. Um, and I don't think this changes anything. <laughs> like, I don't think the 20 to 18 is a real effect. The fact it's not the same time is a little ridiculous and is a good, I think, just owners, players, cat and mouse. Um, but, yeah, I... I, I guess no problem with it. Um, and I if you're a pitcher and this really affects you, like, uh, come on, uh, let's go. So uh, some some people say pitchers are a little soft. And if this is really affecting you at this point, then, yeah. I got a question. Yeah. 
did we ever see like a runner not retouch first base? Say like a foul ball was hit and you got and you're on first base and you round second, go to third, but they're fuck, they called it foul. And yet now you have, you know, 18 seconds to get back to the base and you have to retouch. Yeah, there was one first in the base. Met, Mets, Did we right? see that happen? I thought I did a breakdown on one with the with the Mets or Buck Showalter argued it or um I believe there was one. I okay. think I did a video on it, but I forget. Mets. Because that's what I'm thinking about, like a base yeah, yeah, runner because now, like has less chance to get it was back Alonzo. and get settled. And... Okay. I thought I saw that. But, but I mean, I guess that that's something the umpires have to manage, right? Like there's, there's still some human element of this that if, let's say it's a 3-2 pitch and the runner takes off and they round third on a foul ball, like you got to – kind of let everyone reset right like it's not like the second the foul ball hits the ground 18 seconds just starts ticking off i think as soon as the, like when the pitcher, pitcher gets, gets the new ball right? but we can still con you, if you're an umpire you can still control that well let's not give umpires the credit that they're going to do that part of the gig that's why bill miller yeah there. i mean that we're probably spending a little bit too much time on the two second decrease mm -hmm. but I think we're all in agreement, which I found out was a word. Mm. We're all in agreement that we like the pitch clock and the pitch clock help. You mentioned a little bit about it was moving a little too fast, but I think eventually by the end of the year, I mean, and we've talked about this on the show before, it, this has been the probably the one of the biggest success stories of Rob Manfred's tenure in baseball. So snaps to me for saying that oh, on, yeah. on air. Oh, Batter gets strike because the base runner was too slow. A breakdown. Yeah, it was Pete Alonzo. McNeil was up, and he hit a foul ball down the line, and Alonzo jogged. He was on first base, and he, like, rounded second, and mm -hmm. then he jogged back pretty slow, uh, and he got a violation. So I think that was the one time it happened. So he just didn't touch first and just went back into, like, his, like, lead, and the umpire's like, nah. No, I believe it's just like a delay. I just, of game yeah, almost. yeah, it was just he He's didn't just too get tired. <laughs> he just didn't get back in time. Like he, he walked back. I'm trying to watch it without listening to myself. Yeah. Everyone was ready to go. The pitcher was ready to go. The batter was waiting for Alonzo to touch first and, and didn't step in. He called it. Um, the biggest thing, lesson that everyone learned in the pitch clock was. Don't worry about the pitcher or the batter. That's how like some gamesmanship was made. Like the pitcher would act like he wasn't ready since the batter's clock is earlier than the pitcher's. So a pitcher would be act like he's not even like paying attention and the batter would be waiting for the pitcher to step on the mound. Yeah. And then he would get docked. And they're like, Don't worry about the pitcher. Yeah. They'd be like, He's not on the mound. And that was really a weird one because you'd be like, Hey dude, if you're ready, they can't call it on you. It's as simple as yeah. that. And batters were just like fucking that up. I remember when we, you, we went to a game together in June, Trev, and I think Manoa was pitching against the Yankees, and he was just, or Herman was pitching, and he was just holding guys uh, like they were ready in their hitting position, and you were shocked. This was early. It was in June, and you were like, oh, my God, you just got to stand in the box yeah. while he's holding you like that for 10 seconds? And, you know, I, I saw your eyes, like the pain in it, and I was like, oh, I guess that does suck. Yeah, we didn't see a lot. I think that was what I was kind of alluding to earlier. Like, we didn't see a ton of that, which I thought we would. I thought the pitchers would totally, you know, game this up and use it to their advantage, but they didn't. I, I'm, I wonder if that'll be implemented. Like, teams, you know, teams are always looking for something to get an advantage. Like, I wonder if teams are going to start working on pitch clock management with pitchers and and all that. I, I, I assume you have to. I think they already did that. Like the, the batter has to be set by what? Like eight seconds eight. remaining? Eight seconds they have to be but in eight the box seconds engaged. Is a long that, that'd be like looking. Time. This is gonna sound dumb. Uh, again, because I'm well, I guess I am where most people come for their hitting advice. When <laughs> batters were set at ten seconds, it felt long. It was like, ooh, like if Scherzer saw that, he was gonna mess with you. If you had to stand there for ten seconds ready for what's coming, eight seconds. Kind of felt good. Like, the batter was engaged. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you're doing whatever your, like, final warm-ups are, and if the pitcher throws it there, you're good. And then if it starts ticking down to two or one, it's almost like <laughs> kind of when in football when you see the play clock 
ticking down and the D end like knows the snap has to come. Like if you're the batter and you see that clock getting down there, you're like, Hey, you're about to throw it. Like you have to, and I'm going to, I'm going to light you up. Um, so I don't know. I think, I think what you're saying, like the hitters, again, I think the hitters made the first adjustment that if you stepped in the box too early and you weren't one of the guys that's just stays in the box and doesn't care. Um, yeah, you got got a couple times, and I think if that happens to you once or twice and you're standing there for 12 seconds, just like slowly having your back tighten up, then yeah, you don't do that anymore. I was a big fan of pitch clock, still am. And everyone was saying, oh, in the playoffs, this is going to suck, make it different for ninth inning. No one said that at all during the playoffs. No, nope. I don't even think it was on people's brains anymore during the playoffs when it just like happened and it was fine. So I think everybody said that, like, all right, fine, we'll do it for the regular season, but playoffs, we need the drama, we need the build up. I think we, I, f- I didn't feel I didn't feel like we lost any of that. No, I didn't think so either. And I, I would I would think the numbers easier if it's just the same as well, like fifteen and fifteen, and then for like the base runner scenario, just just let the guy get back. Like the ump starts the clock, like Jake said, and I think you just kind of have to be like, hey, umps, don't be dicks about it. But guys don't abuse it either and just, like, stop at second and talk to a dude. But I, all in all, I think it was a, a pretty good success. I don't think this changes it that much. Does anyone um, – uh, quick Google. I was looking for uh, the amount of time of playoff games. Um, the one thing that popped up said the average playoff game last year was still three hours, one minute. So is that – I don't know. Is that more pitching changes? Is that – I? Extra commercial. It's got to be some more TV, TV time, I'd I guess assume. so, right? Um, but like I think to the add time that much, that's like is extra. I mean, the pit, the pitch clock for cutting out the absolute riffraff, the clips that were going around of, you know, 40, 45 seconds between pitches and a guy just steps out again, like that was a beautiful clearance. Um, I'm, I think I'm team make it the same amount of time, make it 17, 18 seconds. So that's how players operate the best and – Still just trying to get the best product out of the game, but we're we're in a fine place with it. Let me see. I want to try and find so game. The last game was five nothing Rangers. Let me try and find. Okay, there's a five nothing game from the 2022 World Series. So both nine innings, five nothing. 2022 was three hours twenty five minutes, and 2023 was two hours fifty four minutes. So. Yeah, they said the average postseason game was down 22 minutes from 3.23 to 3.01. Yeah, so that's pretty good. So I like I like that length. Yeah. I like that length. Creeping up in the 2.30s. I like 7 o'clock games ending before 10. You know, that's when they, when the they ended like right around, you know, uh, 9.45, 9.50, that was kind of nice. Yeah. All right. Next rule change. Did you even tell the people about SeatGeek? I did, but not fully. Damn. Well, we're co-talking at SeatGeek. You'll get $20 off your first purchase. Go to one of these games. Know that it'll be within that three-hour window. Plan a dinner afterwards. You know, we don't, we don't have umpires and managers doing makeup calls just to make their appointment. And you can get there, too, or go to another event afterwards because there's 70,000 events every single day on SeatGeek. Make sure you're getting a good deal on the app. We, uh, If you consume some John Boy Media, we've got some fun uh, SeatGeek kind of content coming out soon. We'll point you in that direction. Green means good in the app. Red means bad. Go get them green dots. Get some good value. And it's pretty good value when you use Code Talk and you get twenty dollars off your first purchase at SeatGeek. Twenty dollars off your first purchase with promo code Talkin. Click the link, download the app. All right, the next one is mound visits, and I purposely have been not like getting acquainted. With, I was wanted to have my reaction live. This one is odd. The number of mound visits will be reduced from five to four for each team. Though an extra mound visit will still be awarded for the ninth inning if the defensive team has zero remaining visits at the end of the eighth. So if you are in the eighth inning and you're at three mound visits, or or you're at 
four mound visits. Like you've used four? Like you've used four, or you used three of your four, so you have one remaining. Just use it in the eighth inning, and then you get an extra one for the ninth. What's the it, difference? You could just you'll still have one for the ninth. Because if people think there's a benefit to stalling or using it. Yeah. And it, you would... Is there? I, I like well, don't know when there's a benefit for this besides warming up it. Or, or giving information. I'm just saying, like, yeah, you would just use... If, you, if the teams do think it's a benefit... It sounds like this was already, like, a, this This part wasn't a new rule. Like, it sounds like they already... It's, it's, it was we'll five to six? Rewarded. Yeah, we just lose one. It, sound, it sounds like the way that's phrased... That this was in effect the last few years where you get one in the ninth. No, it says we'll still. no, yeah. Like if you're out, you'll still get one in the ninth. If you use all of them, don't worry, you'll still get an extra in the ninth. That's what it says. Yeah, you you uh, had yeah. you had the only loophole. It would be if you really want to use one in the eighth, you use it. Yeah, it would be like don't worry about saving this for the ninth inning. We get one anyway. So you might be. But you've already reduced them by one a game anyway. Yeah, totally. yeah that's just weird. That's just weird to me. And then the other, uh, unless they're saying only the defenders can do it, like the players, because it says later on that umpires will permit defensive players to signal for a mound visit without actually visiting the mound. So I, does that mean like if they've used all of their mound visits, the catcher and the pitch and the coach can't go out anymore, but like an infielder can tell the ump like, hey, we want to use our our last one in the ninth here, so only the Players can I don't know I, I I'm not really following this. I think it might stop the clock as soon as you signal for a mound visit, and that might be it. Instead of having to run and get on the mound, that's the way I'm interpreting it. Oh, I, I like that interpretation this better. Um, this is such a silly mound visits are silly in general. They don't yeah. do anything. It's all a time thing. You they barely were. ever talk strategy. They were a big problem before the, the rules. I Gary think, Sanchez yes. used to do like two an inning. For no reason. Dude, I'm telling you, I was I've never been in a mound visit that meant that meant anything. It's like, hey, hey, big guy, we're gonna give you a breather right here. Like, oh. What a breather? This is baseball, dude. You don't really need breathers in baseball. I'm against mound visits. I think they're silly. Although, I will say as a player, and this is me talking as a fan now, as a player. I did like to get my TV time as a third mm. baseman time. Let me go talk to the guy yeah. and settle him down. I wouldn't say anything, though. Right. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to help him out, but hey, man, I just want to come over and uh, give you some time. And they'd look at me like, go F yourself most of the time. All right. Last thing last thing the pitcher wants to hear from is the chunky third baseman giving pitch. You need a breather? Tips. Glenn Perkins telling you get out of here back to back. Glenn Perkins ups. Jim, I think that last one that you're in the rigmarole about, I think that's for uh, catchers calling timeout to stop the pitch clock. Yes. You know, when we, we saw that. That's a lot. what I was saying. Stop the clock. Yeah. Yeah, they always did that. Time. Right. But I'm. Yeah. Okay, so they're saying you don't even have to go to the mound, but it'll still count as a mound visit if you call time. I think that's what we're doing. Yeah, I think they're saying if a catcher does that, they don't have to go through the farce of going. Oh, the mound. they're that trying makes to sense. cut time. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense then. If you're just using the mound visit because you were going to get docked a violation, don't don't go through the charade of the fake mound An visit. actual mound visit. I mean, that's they're trying the to case. shave off every second possible. And I love this note in here. It says. Survey showed that mound visits were among fans' least favorite events in baseball. Let me get that I survey. I love that survey. Yeah, mound I mean, visit survey. survey too. What do you hate about our sport? Baseball's been looking to baseball's been looking to credit why the sport's been successful, and pitch clock is the first thing they can hang their hat on. So anything that they can cut out time on. Yeah, mound visits were crazy. Like it was like, come on, guys. The only thing is that we like about man, mound visits, and I think, you know, James, you're really going to agree with me here, is seeing what kind of stride the pitching coach or the manager had. I, would, I was just going to say, coaches used to walk as slow as possible and get unlimited mound visits. Like, it was such a charade of, uh, charade of time-wasting. Yes. Yes. 
Like if we go back Except and watch Buck some Show, Walter, 90s he games, had a nice little giddy up in his Joe step. Torrey was walking backwards. <laughs> and uh, the Tampa Bay... Kyle Snyder. Kyle Snyder. I mean, his legs, he could get there in five strides if he wanted to. <laughs> and he like... <laughs> Snail walks his ass to the mound. Kyle Snyder, the Rays pitching coach, he's eight foot three, and he walks as slow as possible to the mound. That's his so. personality. He is. And they were the Rays, guy. so they used every mound visit they possibly could because <laughs> they have to push the boundaries. And it's uh, yeah, it's like a delay a game. Every rules yeah, committee mount- should have like a foreign, a group of foreign people that don't know the sport, like it's their first time ever watching a game, and they should go watch like a weekend's worth of games with the rules committee. And you don't have to abide by everything they say, but some of the stuff they're like, that's, this sucks. And I think if you did this five years ago, every time they just like the catcher ran out to the mound during a big moment or the pitching coach came out and just stalled the game for no reason, the foreigners would be like, this sucks. So I like this rule. Yeah. I volunteer Jessica for that role. I'd say every, every month she just, Gets me with something. I mean, the football games this weekend. She's why doesn't Buffalo have a dome? They didn't have a great answer. I mean, you well, can get into taxpayers. Minnesota's and, collapsed. Sometimes you get too much snow. But they got a new dome. This is true. Yeah, yeah. they have a roof now, not a dome. Yeah. yeah. Is, that, is that the same thing, a roof and a dome? I don't think they are. I think, I dome, think, so. I think domes are roofs, but not all roofs are domes. Rectangle squares. Move, move on. I'm not, I'm not going down that. Uh, batter faced minimums. A pitcher sent to warm up for an inning must face at least one batter in addition to any requirements under the three batter minimum rule. In a, okay, a pitcher sent to warm up for an inning. So, so they, Jim, if I may, so this is commercial break yeah, ends. This is the first one that got me a little jazzy because this, this is a good cut. It, it doesn't happen a lot, but normally in baseball for years, it's the, hey, you need to announce the pinch hitter. Once they announce the pinch hitter, Okay, then the manager comes in and the pitcher's coming out. But what this is for a pitcher, uh, you know, say it's the starting pitcher comes out for the sixth inning um, and they warm up and they send up and they announce a pinch hitter, that starting pitcher is still going to have to face that hitter. Or if it's a reliever trying to dodge the minimum. So if you come out and you warm up on that mound, you are going to have to face a batter. So a manager is going to screw this up. Because uh, for years it's been announced the hitter and then we can make the change. This gives the offense the advantage. I love this. You, th- you think a manager's going to screw up by saying, hey, we're going to take him out now. And the umpire's be like, no, no, no. Yes. Yeah. Just to throw one batter. Yeah. And if it's up, I mean, yeah, and- this totally gives the advantage to the offensive team. Good. Yeah. So, like, Juan Soto's on the bench today. He's not. He's got a day They're off. Not doing that. He plays every game. And yeah. He's on okay. A one-year contract. All right. So all right. New example. It's a day okay. Judge. Okay. Um. Uh. Rizzo's on the bench. He's on a heater. He's really good. Bryce Harper's sitting. I'll go off the Yankees. Uh, Bryce Harper's sitting. He's not playing this game. And they're facing the Mets. He's a warrior. You think Bryce? And would who's sit a up? who's a righty starter on the Mets but, right now? Uh-huh. <laughs> who's a Sanga. Sanga? And Sanga is at a hundred and five pitches. But he's facing uh, a, a two righties to start the seventh inning. So they send Sanga out to warm up. Hey, you're probably not going to finish this inning, Sanga, but you're going to get the first two batters. While he's warming up, they, they say, oh, we're going to go to our bench. We're going to bring the lefty Harper up to face the righty, Sanga. In all times past, the Mets would say, actually, Sanga, never mind. Probably not the best to have you face a lefty when you're at 100 and something pitches and it's a close game. Now, they're going to say, oh, shit. Okay, you have to face Harper. Yes. Walk him, and then you're coming out of the game. Or, you <laughs> yeah. know, something like that. But, yeah, I like that. It, it is. I like it because the farce of having a pitcher warm up when you know he's not facing a batter, even without pinch hitting, Jake, like you know that, is bullshit and just time-wasting. Right. But it is interesting to give the batter the the uh, advantage in the pinch hitting uh, pitcher replacement for the first time ever. Yeah, I mean it, it happened all the time in the dugouts. If you're in there, the manager, pitching coach, hey, hey, get out there. You're gonna warm up. They're gonna pinch hit. You'll be out. Like that. That's that was definitely a thing. And now we have data on it. 24 instances in 2023 of a pitcher warming up between innings and getting replaced before throwing a pitch, and it added 
three minutes of dead time per event. Three minutes to Major League Baseball might as well be ten years right now. <laughs> but also, <laughs> I think if anyone if anyone's here. like it only happened twenty four times, what do you care? You just flip it right back on their head. Yeah, it only happened twenty four times. This is right. It's just like fucking. Let's just blame it yeah. on Buck. Buck did it every time. Two with games Sanga. a month. Yeah, two games a month. So. I mean, nice. it, it feels like, you know, every now and then, especially maybe less in recent years, but it'd be like, come back from commercial first, second, be like, yeah, they pinch it, so new pitcher. Let's and work, let's get, instant, let's get our guys, double commercial. let's get our guy Morgan Sword on the show, and I want to ask him, have, have we reworked the three batter minimum yet? Here's a, what I, what I hope can happen with this rule, because like we're saying, it's, yeah, like this is kind of the sweet spot. This didn't happen a ton, but when it does happen, it kind of stinks. So good. Perfect. Um. I'd love to see if teams try to take advantage of this from a, uh, let's say, starting pitchers coming out for that fifth or sixth inning. Maybe their their pitch counts in the high 80s. Like, kind of like the example you said, like maybe the manager sees a good, you know, 8 9 1 coming up in the order um, and they've got two guys on their bench. Maybe they. Maybe they go to that bench a little earlier than they normally would uh, in that fifth or sixth inning to try to get a leadoff hitter on and just throw off the other team's rhythm. So I Can you send a fake hitter up? Like, all right, say in my example, it's the okay. fifth inning. Fifth inning. And the inning, the, the, the Phillies just get out of the inning. Now, Harper's not playing. He's on the bench that game. Can they say, hey, Bryce, put a helmet on and a bat in your hand and just as soon as this last out's recorded, run out to the on-deck circle. Act like we're pinch hitting you. And then the Mets, they got to decide, oh, shit. If we send him to the mound, he has to hit. And then they say, we're, oh, we don't send him to the mound. So they're bringing in a relief pitcher because Bryce Harper, the decoy, and then can Bryce just step back down? Eventually, they're probably going to make a rule that as soon as a guy steps out, with a helmet and a bat on his, in his hands, he has to hit. I don't know because you can. Yeah, because right now you, you have get to declare. Dec- yeah, I wonder if you get decoys the other way. Yeah, pitcher has to be. I think to start an inning, the opposite of baseball has been for years. Uh, that normally the hitter has to be announced first. The pitcher has to be announced first. So I th- I think for that process, the Mets in this example would have to say. Player player X is starting the inning. Yes, I know. I'm just saying you can get decoy pinch hitters, and that's pretty fun. Sure, make them real. If they if they're on the end on edge about oh should we send them out for another inning? Yeah. Who's he gonna face? And like oh shit, they got seven. Hey, so they got seven I'm, guys. I'm viewing it as kind of like a board game. Like yes, that that decoy can be out there, and maybe that'll sway teams. But it'll be okay. Who is before you can announce Bryce Harper the hitter? Who who be pitching? Well, yeah, it, but if Bryce isn't, doesn't have his helmet on in the bat, then it's not. Yeah, you don't even have to worry about it. This is in the Maybe it's a double rule, decoy. like like if Bryce were were on the bench that day, so he's a bench player. Isn't he like technically not allowed to step onto the field? I know we've seen it happen before, and like it, like a fight breaks out, technically like. Aren't they extra in trouble? Like, there's an extra fine there. I, might know I think that's you. just during a fight because, like, during celebration. Like, yeah. shit, is it, does that time. rule? Would that rule apply to if, or would they apply that rule to like can't just like go stand in the on deck circle without being announced as entering the game? I, I, I'm actually asking. Uh, maybe the on deck circle. They do decoys already. You know, like Judge yeah. will have the day off and. I remember when they played, their you know, put the helmet on in the bat in hand, top step, and then as soon as the at bat's top over, step, he yes. actually goes back. That's during yes. an inning. Yeah. So I don't know. The top step I definitely have is like no question you're allowed to do that. I don't know if stepping onto the field is like a in between innings, maybe? I have no idea. So that's, that's that. That's the rule. loophole I could think of. The other one is if a new pitcher steps onto the warning track with less than two minutes remaining. On the inning break clock, which is what five minutes, two fifteen. So the new pitcher has to get out there. All right, let me finish it. The new pitcher steps onto the warning track with less than two minutes remaining on the inning break clock. The clock will reset to two minutes rather than two fifteen. So this is actually something the other direction. I think this is, you know, if, uh, if one of your relief pitchers, their cleat falls off before they get onto the field, they put their cleat back on, 
they step on the warning track and it's one thirty minute thirty till first pitch, it resets to two minutes. But not two fifteen. Uh, like not previously fully reset to yeah. two fifteen. But if you so if you come out with a minute thirty to go, you're gonna get an extra thirty seconds. Right. But yeah. they were yeah. your promise two minutes from yeah. step out of the bullpen to So they're not taking break. a lot away, but they're taking some away. If you you know, you're finishing up a piss. You want to throw that one last warm up pitch? I don't really, I don't understand how that one even came to be, but okay. I think we move on from that one. That one's yeah. a silly one. Trev, speaking of two minutes, weren't you saying you were unhappy with your sexual performance? I never said that. Oh, well, a lot of people mm-hmm. are. A okay. lot of people are. Uh, and this is a new partner of ours, Joy Mode. <laughs> I, uh, I'm often searching for joy mode. I am in on this. I, I'm a joy mode fan, Jake. And whether, and this is the good news for you, whether you're happy or unhappy with your performance in the bedroom, why not perform even better? 1% better every day. And at joy mode, their trademark product, the sexual performance booster, is every man's solution for increased blood flow. Yep. Firmness. Okay. Stamina, important, and performance. It's like pre-workout for sex. It's a palm-sized oh packet. You got me. You just sold me. That's what I do. What you Say that again. That's what I do. It's like pre-workout for sex. <laughs> you know, if you're going to get a good pump in, if you know what I'm saying, you get your pre-workout Then get on. a good pump in. Simply mix with six to eight ounces of water 45 minutes before sexual activity and watch the magic unfold. Use joymode.com slash talking 20% off with code talking at checkout. That's 20% off and free shipping with code talking. Use joymode.com slash talking. Great sex. Solve naturally. Link in the description. Trev, you raise your hand, which is fun. I don't know if they want me to say this. Here we go. This is an enhancer, not like a ED type thing. You, anyone can use this is what I'm trying to say. Say you have a special yeah. night and you're mm. trying to make an impression. Right. I think joy mode's the way to go. And I think I want them to send me some. Maybe it's not even a special night. Maybe it's just a Tuesday and you, uh, you know, you want to command Jesus the mound. Can be special. Command the mound a little bit. You know what I'm mm, saying? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Get back on that pitch clock. All right. Jim, here's the big one. Not talking joy mode. You ready for it? Base runners lane. The committee voted to widen the runners lane to include the dirt between the foul line and the infield grass. So, what you grow up believing is the running lane. Your entire youth. And when you show that foreigner or sweet Jessica <laughs> a baseball field and you say, hey, what do you think the running lane is? Right. And they say, probably that strip of dirt. Yeah. It's now correct. Want to go straight to the base. <laughs> it's now correct. I think if you run straight to the base on that strip of dirt, that's probably legal. Wrong. Forever, I guess. And for the last, for the last eight years, like, actively wrong and they finally baseball said maybe let's go back to the common sense interpretation of runner's lane this is huge trey turner in the world series calling out joe tory trey turner the next year davy martinez printing out a piece of paper Mm -hmm. after the post game and showing it and saying what the fuck is this Mm -hmm. they finally said you know what we won't be stubborn on this one you guys are probably right so Seems silly. This is actually a big one. This has been such a, a, a frustratingly dumb issue. I've probably done like five to ten breakdowns since 2017 on just this issue. And it, and it changed defense. If, they, if the catcher or the third baseman saw him running in that left side of the dirt, which everyone, every righty batter runs in, they could just throw the ball at the runner and then he's out. So this is huge and, and like great. I hope it doesn't lead to more problems. But this is good. This is the great yeah, this is the gray area that I was talking about on the open of the show. I just had to Google like where the runner's lane line was on the field. I played baseball my entire life. I never paid attention to that line once. I 
it's on the right, the foul side of the base, mm-hmm. hugged up against the grass cut. I, if you said draw a baseball field, I wouldn't have drawn it there. So that's how much this runner's lane prior to this new update meant to any baseball player. No one knew what was going on. This is such an interesting one because not only do we have you know, umpires kind of interpreting it, but now we're, we are including the entire dirt lane. That is now the runner's lane. The problem is they're all different. Some of the foul, the foul lines hug the inside part of the grass and leave you more on the foul side of it. And they're saying it ha- now it has to be 18 to 24 inches of dirt mm. depending on the field on the fair side of the line. So this is um I'm happy that it's 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 clear now because yeah we saw so many instances where oh he was inside the line he's out the catcher threw the ball it hit him but sometimes it would get called sometimes it wouldn't get called it was straight up how we feel in today umpire do you want to get involved do you want to have a manager come out and argue with you there it is no longer illegal common sense wins out it it never made sense because you had to run on the foul side of the base and then come back and touch the base, which clearly is in fair territory because the base it, it, is in fair it, territory. It, was it just honest, it never made sense. It was honestly, they when they wrote the rules back in 19-whenever, they were like, everyone gets it. And then in like 2015 on, umpires started being like, no, uh, it literally means this. And they, you know, kind of like, you know, constitutionalist people would be like, those know what they meant. Or anti-constitutionalist, I guess. That's basically how it, yes. like, it's not the purpose. So. Umpires, anti-constitution. You heard it here. Mm. They're constitutionalists. But that's what they have to be. I know. Yeah, a, I don't know. A, lo- a, lot, ahead, of the, a lot of the purists don't like this. I'm. I'm still kind of a sneaky double bad guy. I, I know there's a there's a softball like inclination there that a lot of MLB fans on the couch oh, your double bag ruin the field. Um, we don't need any of this. Like none of none of either this base running area or you know potential like bang bang plays at first base that lead to injuries and collision. Like I don't know that's. One of our more dangerous plays in baseball currently is a dangerous throw to the first baseman because they're sitting there kind of like a quarterback just in the open field ready to get popped depending where the throw is. Like, I, I, I think I'm, I'm willing to expand on this more. Like, let's, let's get out of the way and let's get the contact out of there. But isn't that the same at any base? Like in any other base, uh, the runner establishes the baseline and you have three feet on either side of it. And as a fielder, you have to. We don't have three feet on either side. What are you talking about? We just said you got 18 to 24 inches. I understand that. I'm saying, other than first base, it's three feet after you establish the baseline. So you could establish a baseline wherever you kind of want. Right. And then the fielders have to move and create a lane to throw so they don't hit you. I don't know what the difference is at first base. Like, you just got to create a lane or get the fuck out of the way if you're going to get hit. Like, that happens every other, at every other base. So I don't, I, I don't know. I'm this, this to me is, I'm happy with it because it just kind of clarifies the rule. But look at this one. No longer illegal because no one would ever watch that and say Trey Turner's doing something wrong. Ever. He got called for that? Yeah. Maybe I've spent more time with this than most people because I do a video on it all the time. It's the most preposterous and ridiculous thing, so I'm so, so glad they changed it. That is insane because, you know what? He got called there, but probably 80% of the time he wouldn't get called because the umpires just don't. They never enforce the rule the same way. It was always like, I don't know. uh, What are you feeling today, John? At least there's clarity now. I think that is my main takeaway is okay. We know exactly what the rule should be and how it's going to be enforced. Go play the game. Yeah. I'm excited about that one. 
And then what's this say? Rules tabled. So they said, I love table and stuff. That's awesome. A proposed rule aimed at limiting fielders' ability to block bases other than home plate was unanimously tabled by the committee for further discussion this offseason. So I think I, I remember talking to you guys about this, and I noticed it a lot more last year with Donaldson and Tim Anderson and some other players of uh, blocking the base runner's path to third base in particular. I know they do it at, at second as well, but it was like if a guy was taking a big lead off third and the catcher wanted to snap throw to third, they, you know, Donaldson, and this is why Donaldson and Anderson got into that fight, just put his whole leg in front of the base and then would catch the ball and just fucking slam down where he's going to hit him. He's got to dive head first and change it. I believe, Trev, you have a counter to the problem here. Or was that Jake? No, that's Trev. Trev says going with the spikes. Yeah, I mean, if you know a guy's going in head first, I mean, why wouldn't you put your knee down after you have the ball? I mean, that's that's within the rules. And you can block the base to tag as soon as you have the ball. Now, if you're going in before you have the ball, obviously that's illegal. But runners are always so mad. Oh, what, what are you trying to hurt me? I'm like, no, bro. I'm trying to get an out. And you can go and spikes up to make sure I never do that again. But you want I, I, is sliding head first faster? I I guess the only maybe it's more elusive. I guess, but like if you if I know that you're a runner, if say my shortstop, and I know you're a runner who comes in to second base and you slide head first every single time. I mean, you're taught to catch the ball and put your freaking leg in front of the base. That's just what you're taught. And I think it's actually good baseball. Like, if you're going to do something to be evasive, I'm going to do something to stop that. Now, you, there's a counter to that. You can come in and blow me up. And I've seen that happen where guys all of a sudden change up because I know some guy's known for putting their knee down. He goes and spikes up. That You can do that. I, so this is... I, I never want guys to get hurt, and I think this is what they're trying to avoid is like, you know, fingers being broken and all these different things. But there's a reason it got tabled because they're like, well, this doesn't make sense. It got tabled because the players want it. Um, like, I, the counter to Ooh, that I is... Know. I don't know. Okay, pick pick off... Trev, you're leading off third base. Yeah. Here's the pitch. Catcher, pick off, play to third. Yeah. You're not sliding back cleats. Like, cleats first. You're going back head first to dive back for the base. So Don't get off too far that the catcher's going to pick you off. If you're going to be an idiot and get off the base so far that the catcher wants to pick you off, then that's what you have to... Right, but what's do. better for the game? A casual collision for no reason at third base or aggressive base running? Like, uh, I don't know. The the blocking the bases does nothing for me. I know you were taught it, but uh, also catchers were told to block home plate originally and to get in the way. So, like, I, it's it, it's the advancement of the game for me, and I I don't know. There's There's one or two plays a year when they zoom in and you're like, wow, can you... He's actually he's touching his leg. He blocked the bag, and it's like, wow, that's that was a heads up play. Um, I don't know what that that does for me personally, and uh, I don't know. I I think people are for some of those plays, especially pickoff plays and stuff like that. You're not gonna slide back feet first. You're gonna go in head first. Um, so your your runner counter there doesn't exactly work perfectly because you you wouldn't go in spikes first. I think you're also you were, not going to get hurt in those situations because you're sliding back with not as, enough force to really do anything. Now, I can understand you're saying, well, you can't get back to the base. There's no there's nowhere to go. I can see that, but umpires will call it, and you can. I think you can challenge that if like they block the base without having the ball. I'm pretty sure you can challenge obstruction. Um, I don't know, man. I, I think that you can't just give and give to base runners. Like you already gave them the three pickoff rule. You know, you already gave them the pitch clock that you can time up. Now all of a sudden we're saying, well, now you can just slide into the base however the fuck you want with no repercussion. I don't know, man. Like sometimes you got to still keep some strategy in the game and, and some physicality to the game. Like if you're, if, but if I get, if you're one of those guys that, that abuses this rule and you're actively trying to hurt guys and, and put your knee down to, to, to inflict pain and all these things. And you you don't have the ball. I get that, but 
still part of the game. Man. Here, let me let me show you the Tim Anderson and Josh Donaldson example, and for anyone that wants to look at it, because I think they tabled this because they don't know how to police it, and they want to figure out a, a right way to do it. Because it does seem, you know, the way Josh is doing it here is is going to break his arm. Like what happened to you? Oh, shout out AJ. And it's a catcher thrown back to third, but like Donaldson's knee comes pretty late and almost just like bends his forearm or, you know, gets his forearm in the middle and then they got in a fight over it. That's real slow-mo, Trev. Like in real speed, it was pretty fast because yeah, no, they're, I mean, they're kind of diving over there. I just don't know how you police that because you could say that's Donaldson's natural movement getting to the ball, but I don't know. Yeah. At second base... <laughs> It's so policeable by the players because it's like if your leg's there, just go and feed first, and that's going to suck. Yeah, I mean, I, I get there are some instances where, you know, you have to go back head first, for instance, right there, and diving back into first base head first, but I don't know. I, I, I think he can't take all of the physicality out of the game. And some of these things, like, they're just counters to, um, you know, a, a – a, of a runner trying to take advantage. Like you have to be able to counter that in some fashion as a defender, but I also don't want to see guys get hurt. So I, I, I understand. I'm, I'm, I always say number one thing for me is let's get the best players and keep them on the field. Cause that's what fans want to see. You don't want to see guys get hurt. You want the best players in the field, all of that. But some, I don't know. I think sometimes we're going a little too far. It would be it would be like what do they come up with to prevent this from happening and and how often do they call it and who's in charge of calling it and I, there's probably so much learning about that to like we can't institute that right now and change it and like test it in the minors and all that shit I think they did. Who I have an idea? They did test it okay. in some league. If we do this rule and we untable it and make it a rule, no more oven mitts. Get rid of the oven mitts. The oven, Not allowed to wear the oven mitt. The oven mitts should be fucking so illegal. I, I can't believe. Credit to Brett Gardner. And adds an extra inch. Credit to Brett Gardner, my dude, who invented it. And I think he's going to have his oven mitt in the Hall of Fame. Uh, but it's crazy that you just get an extra longer <laughs> fingers. Can I wear batting gloves with, with inch, like, corks at the end? <laughs> like when you're running? Yeah, like I, so I get the first, I get the first <laughs> base saying, and I put dude. a batting glove on that has you know an inch of cork at the end of the fingertips and now I'm just longer. I'll ban the oven. You could. I suppose you're at a jam risk there, but I don't see why you why it would be against the rules. Maybe my fingers go inside the cork the, and so to have like a finger slot. The glove, yeah. if it's Glo- nice. glove gets cut open and just corks pop out. It's like uh, <laughs> it's like these little feet. Like look, uh, just, yeah, yeah. Illegal. Oh, look, you could do it. Now I'm sliding feet first. Feet first, hands first. And I'm I a have, speedy base I, runner. I need all the rules to favor me. And no. I have, and I do want stealing back in the game. I'll trade yeah. out the glove for not blocking the bases. Okay. I bet you, I bet you the runners wouldn't do it. It's too too cool now. Too much swag to give up. What am I supposed the to put in my back The oven made swag? Oh, my. Go watch a youth baseball game. These kids don't even know how to slide head first and they have oven mitts on. Right. <laughs> Oven mitts are in youth baseball. Oh my! Teddy has one. Trev, he has That's no unreal. idea. He asks me every day. You teach me how to slide head first. I'm like, no. So how do I even teach you that? It's just something you do. Sliding head first know. was illegal in the, when I was in elementary school. I was gonna say, I feel like there was like a year it became like you're allowed. It to might do be because yeah. they can't do it. Yeah, it was. It was like when I was in middle school. It was like you can slide head first now. You can't have. All right, you Jake. Have, here, let's deal. You gotta oven hide that. Gone. You gotta hide that oven mitt. For the knee. You gotta hide that oven mitt, Trev. I mean, you gotta say like, oh, from fuck. Teddy. Yeah. No, he loves. And he just like said it looks cool. You gotta say like the groundhogs are back and they must have stole your oven mitt. No, this is <laughs> no, where uh, this is where uh, old sco- this is where old school parenting kicks in. You tell him you want to wear an oven mitt. You got to wear two the whole game. You got to help mom cook three pies. So he's hitting. He's double oven mitt. He's fielding. He's double oven mitt. And that'll get it. You got to wane him off. I've heard of parents doing that. You catch your son like, this is way okay. old school because nobody smokes cigarettes anymore. <laughs> but you catch him smoking a cigarette and you make him smoke like a whole pack right yeah. in a row. <laughs> my grandpa did it with my dad. Heard that. In front of me. 
Ugh. It's gross. All right, so those are all the new rules. You want an oven and sm- oven mitt? Smoke a whole pack of cigs in front of me. <laughs> Have you watched your <laughs> oven hey, mitt? Hey, Teddy. Teddy. Smoke a whole pack of yeah. cigs. Dad, this doesn't even make sense, Dad. <laughs> I'm your dad. Trev, I, I know we've already talked about it. Um, man, Teddy working the ladder the other day got me. That was the first time it was like kid in the backyard playing baseball, and then it was like dude training to play baseball, oh, yeah. and I'm worried. Oh, it just got yeah, me because I was like, training. shit, like Teddy's, Teddy's a kid. He's old. Yeah, that's how I felt too. He's. It's funny because that's what I see now Like when he's playing is there's kids, uh, the best kids, they just know how to control their bodies at this age. Mm. Like either they're strong enough to control it or they just are naturally uh, able to control their bodies. Most of these kids can't. So I, we got this ladder and like just watching him try to like control his feet and his arms all together is just hilarious. Um, but yeah, we got a little, like, you know, a little ground ball session, tea work, you know. He loves the ladder. I think that's really important. Hey, if you're a parent and your kid is... Uh, a youth baseball player, ladder, man. Get the ladder, make him do it, or soccer. Like, you got to do one of those two because the footwork is so important. So, yeah. He's doing it. He's having fun. All right. James golf swing is better than mine. Sent the video to Jake yesterday. James right? is going to be it's something. really nice. James is either going to be the the next, like, multi-sport athlete. He can't like, like a um, dude perfect type of guy. Like He's got, like, uh, Juan Soto's, like, legs. Like, how much he gets in his legs and squats is crazy. What's he squatting right now? Him, his body weight, which is probably more than he should be able to do. <clears throat> it's pretty good. Dude, he's – make him a golfer. Golfer's got the life, dude. Yeah, look. Look, 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 at, this, look at this squat. Oh, he is using his legs already. I can see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And look at that the hip transfer there. Oh, make him a golfer, James. Dude, dude that it's, is it's it. It's fucking crazy. I sit, hey, I hey. sit on the other side of the room. I said, try to hit me in the head. He almost he almost got me twice. Katie was like, what are you doing? I'm like, well, it's a good aim. He likes live doing golf. It. We'll just throw some money at him right now. Dude, you never he know. He loves doing it. We just go down there and he does it. And then he pitches me batting practice. Hmm. All right. Love you guys. See ya. How many rule you want in baseball? Hmm. Work.